now we have again assembled in this virtual conference hall for our third, uh, our next panel discussion, uh, which is on green data center network challenges and opportunities. As you all know, this is again one of the major area of concern for the BFSI institutes and banks uh, across the world, across the country. This session will be moderated by Mr. Suresh A. Shah, who is Head Innovation and Future Technologies at Mahindra and Mahindra Financial Services uh, Limited. And the panel panelists for this session are Mr. Rajiv Khada, Vice President, Global Information Technology at Sigma Electric Manufacturing Limited. Minakshi Kuntia, who is Director at Data, Director of Data and Analytics at G Healthcare, and Mr. Sandeep Kothari, ex head IT at Prince Pipe and Fitting Limited. We have panelists from different domains with different sectors in this panel discussion. And I would now request Mr. Suresh Ishan to please navigate this panel discussion. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome to the uh, uh, panel where the uh, need of the hour and the requirement of a data center where how, how efficient or it is going to serve us for the future and post COVID, how these data centers are going to materialize a loss for us where growing digital transformation, the green data center networks are going to be a challenge or going to be opportunities for our organizations. And uh, surely it, it's going to even elaborate more. And we have a diversified panel where they can give more views about the data center and the kind of facilities or features which is coming out of the especially green uh, data centers and the kind of opportunities which will take us to uh, use as much as more effectively and efficiently. And the kind of challenges which uh, generally comes out part of electricity and AC related requirements part of a green data center where now it's much more than that and the kind of metrics and set kind of parameters which allows us to get enabled and empowered data centers part of the green efficiency, one of the big equipment and trying to utilize as much as in terms of the uh, hierarchies with scalable more of an efficient energy kind of thing and it enables us to have high availability in terms of uh, clusters and trying to utilize uh, efficient part of it. Now, uh, specific in terms of uh, green data centers, not necessarily for the enterprise storage or could be enterprise security storage, have enough on the corporate and the kind of customer uh, data which is raising heavily due to the COVID and uh, kind of uh, digital transformation which is transformed us to get into uh, best of effectiveness and the kind of uh, digital transformation expect us to go in future and try to fetch where are we now and what all the things required for us to take us to the next level. So uh, it's, a, it's a, a well set diversified panel and uh, let us start with the uh, panelists to understand how the growing digital uh, transformation, especially when it comes to green data center networks, the challenges or we see it as more of opportunities or the organization is already planned. We are into the journey and we are trying to equip it. I'll uh, start with uh, Madam uh, Minakshi, Madam, where to uh, get a glimpse of it, how your organization sees uh, green data center networks as a challenge or an opportunity. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Suresh, for the opportunity. So, um, so I come from uh, G Healthcare, and uh, the, the that business is basically a very legacy industrial uh, business. You must have heard about General Electric. And uh, the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the data that was getting generated in, in our industries are humongous. They, they're generally in petabytes and zettabytes. Uh, of data units and to actually manage that uh, traditionally our business always have been looking at uh, using on-premise data centers and I think that's that's basically was the hot technology uh, till a while back uh, where uh, you know we would just add more and more high energy intensive uh, racks of servers and we keep adding data more and more and given the industrial background we come from the, the retention of the data is also very important. Hence, we we do by, by legal compliance uh, and regulatory standards, we are actually mandated to store this data for about seven to 10 years or so at, at uh, some businesses. So that, you know, is obviously uh, generating a huge demand uh, for the storage of this data as well as 
a pretty high compute to even process this data because if you are probably giving a combination of hot storage and a, a warm or a cold data storage, you also need enough compute to be able to quickly uh, get the data out of that cold st storage or the warm storage to be able to use that along with the current data that you're operating on. So that you know summarizes the need of uh, you know really big data centers. And uh, of course, since this data is also very, very sensitive, these, these, this, this data gets generated from our machines directly. These are sensor IoT data. And hence, for us to really share infrastructure and share any kind of data storage with you know, other companies or other businesses was not really not an option. So at one point in time, uh, we ourselves were actually evaluating whether we can have our own data centers. We were trying to set that up on premise. Uh, in a few centers in the US. Uh, however, uh, you know, that uh, that did uh, take up a lot of cost and uh, a lot of challenges in terms of the performance and the efficiency came up. And we learned a lesson that, that I think that uh, the whole space of how you manage the data, how you set up the data centers, and uh, like efficiency, the performance, the reliability, those are really the, the key success metrics of you know even evaluating the data center or, or uh, creating the data center. And now with the, the kind of data, the amount of data that's getting generated across, now energy efficiency is, is getting added as yet another success metric. So uh, I think the, the whole transformation from being on-premise, having our own data centers, that transformation is now slowly moving towards cloud computing, edge computing, trying to process the data as much as possible, closer to the endpoints, closer to the equipment, and moving only the essential and aggregated data back to the cloud. And cloud being you know, the virtualized data center for us, where it, it gives you a lot of flexibility and options to have energy efficient uh, you know, storage and compute. Sorry, Dr. Suresh, we can't, we can't hear you. You're muted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you started with the uh, medical industry, and again, uh, your uh, your thing is mostly on the on-premise data center and trying to have the retention information for seven to ten years. Again, it's all uh, for even BFSI, you know, seven to uh, ten years. It's a must. And again, you uh, pointed out on the hot storage, close to uh, cold storage, how current data is using, and it's more sensitive. Again, medical data is more sensitive, and we can't just share it uh, on the secure storage. And uh, rightly pointed out again, uh, uh, creating our on premise, getting into a new data center and building on your own, cost plays a major role again. I uh, know, and uh, the kind to uh, uh, leverage cloud computing and virtualization, other things on that. Great, great to hear. Surely I'll come back to you on the cloud computing and other things uh, during the uh, second round. And uh, sir, getting back to uh, Mr. Rajiv. Uh, in your organization, how you feel a uh, green uh, data center networks uh, centers try to be more an opportunity or a, a challenge or are the organization still leverage or already your leverage to maximum so that your journey started? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Suresh. Uh, very appropriate question. I can say that. And uh, I come from a manufacturing background. All over the years, I have worked for the manufacturing industry in various uh, segments. And uh, earlier, it used to be only a single kind of um, uh, application or the server requirement, wherein we used to host the ERP as the main application. But nowadays, uh, because of the various uh, requirement business needs, the number of applications have increased a lot. And so the compute power has also increased. So as a traditional way, what used to happen is that we go on adding the one server after the another server in our uh, data center racks. And naturally, what happens is that uh, the requirement of compute power and also the uh, requirement of uh, backend infrastructure and the maintenance also amounts up. Uh, what I mean to say is that requirement of air conditioning, requirement of electrical power, requirement of physical space, and all this uh, goes on increasing. And ultimately, we have to depend on the, our in-house maintenance department to um, give us this kind of facility and uh, maintain it. But overnight, or uh, in those days, it used to happen that uh, either in some uh, midnight call, we used to receive that the data center EC is not working, data center light is not working. So that went on adding to the worries of IT department and uh, 
IT department was not able to you know, focus on the core activities, or for that matter, the manufacturing industry was not able to focus on their core manufacturing business. So this has led to the more and more requirement of uh, outsource kind of data centers, wherein the ready available uh, compute power is available and the latest kind of compute power is available and also the topic of today's discussion that is about the green cloud uh, green data centers that is also taken uh, into consideration in the back end by the service provider so that relieves us from the uh, burden of maintaining a data center refreshing the uh, equipments and uh, all those uh, things which revolve around the maintenance of the data center so uh, recently we uh, evaluated all these facilities and uh, we took a decision that uh, we should move our core applications from our in-house premise uh, data center to outsource or the hosted kind of uh, environment. So that gave us a, a good amount of relief. And uh, this also leads to <clears throat> very least amount of maintenance. And uh, uh, another facility, uh, biggest advantage of this kind of uh, facility outsource is that you can add your applications, you can transform your workloads, whichever you want to move to cloud, just on the fly. Earlier, it was not there. If you want to add a particular application in the uh, in house premises, uh, then you have to think of what is the server requirement, what are the sizing to be done, what space is required, what rack space is required, and then you order it, and then the usual lead time, and then erection and everything. But now it is, this is not the case. If you want to add a particular application, you can add that a particular application on the fly in a software defined kind of environment. You get that computer po compute power just within a couple of minutes. So that is the biggest advantage according to me of the cloud uh, computing. And uh, this is also taken care in the back end by the uh, service providers with related to green um, uh, data centers. All those features are already available uh, with them. And just we have to, we don't have to worry about all this uh, backend uh, maintenance hassles. So that is my opinion on uh, green uh, data centers and the benefit that we as end users will be getting from uh, green data centers. Uh, great, great, uh, Mr. Rajiv. Uh, and again, uh, from the manufacturing industry, what type of uh, uh, cultural uh, no, uh, governance, which we start with an ERP application when it comes to a specific in terms of application is getting uh, very limited good olden days and now it's getting increased and even uh, the uh, warning concerns of our data center and uh, the kind of uh, even a small switch issues or even light is not there the kind of stress is more uh, built on the IT now by getting into an outsource maintenance even manufacturing industry is trying to concentrate more on the SaaS pass and trying to create as much as cloud enable which empowers the manufacturing industry also great great insights I, I'll come back to you in the second round on the SaaS pass like what are the pros and cons how to break it out now uh, getting to mr sandeep like in your case like how the concerns about uh, environmental impacts or uh, you feel uh, like no uh, the warning data center especially uh, create some electrical uh, you know, cost or energy needs or uh, specific to a uh, green which uh, we can achieve more when you try to get into outsource so your thoughts on uh, the green data center networks and the challenges or it's an opportunity for all of us in your organization. Sandeep, your issues on that. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Suresh, for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my views. So, predominantly, my career has been with the uh, retail and manufacturing industry verticals, wherein we are fortunate that in both these industries, our organizations were forward thinking and were uh, fortunate that we were getting into the data center space. Yes, there were challenges in, uh, with respect to the power consumption and the, towards this scalability while we were facing into our B2C environment, uh, wherein for our manufacturing, we were facing issues that well, how do you scale up? Because what was happening uh, in our case was that we wanted to deploy IIoT within our factories. We wanted to connect all our 129 machines. So that was the thought process which was given. And then we said that bef before getting into this IoT, let us move our physical infrastructure on premises to our cloud. That was the journey we started. And then we kept our legacy, our 10 years old data that, so that is only on the on premises, rest everything, our core applications, our 
uh, environment of uh, development, everything was uh, moved on to our public data center. So yes, we feel that there are opportunities over there at the data center point of view, compared to uh, grid and green data center. And that helped us a lot uh, for implementing our IIoT at our factories. And that is where we are now planning to move towards other factories as well. While in our retail industries, when we are more focused on B2C in one of my organization, we, we were completely on e-commerce uh, platforms, our own e-commerce websites were there. Of course, we were on B2B as well. But we were all on all, everywhere on the market basis we are there. That is where we felt that we should need the power of computing. And that is where we felt that, no, these are the best uh, opportunities which we got. Uh, thanks, thanks, Mr. Sandeep. Like, uh, as, uh, again, you mentioned uh, retail and manufacturing industry, especially, uh, uh, you, know, you depend a lot more on e-commerce and trying to uh, do, especially on IoT and uh, physical, especially on premise, doesn't enable or connect you to create the reach and speed. So you created as much as on the public data, especially keeping the great data uh, for that. Mr. Sandeep, again, one more question to you here, connecting it. Uh, Cloud uh, generally generates something to do with more on e-commerce or uh, it gives you more flexible options part of e-commerce. When you talk about especially green data center networks, you created that as an opportunity. The how opportunities give you more uh, more space, especially when it comes to e-commerce. So yes, the, what it, it was giving us the complete flexibility for our operations. You know, we never were bothered or we were never worried about the spikes during our sale period or when we were launching a new product. So we had a complete uh, visibility also, and, and at any given point of time, we were able to focus on our core business, and then we were able to connect to our customers, to our service network as well. So that has helped us a lot, which was, uh, we, there was a lacuna in our own system. How do we handle the end users uh, servicing part? Because we were into more into kitchen appliances. So if at all your one your mixture is not working, then it's entire nobody keeps two mixers in a house. So that is where we uh, due to this e-commerce and due to the servicing aspect, uh, the entire flexibility, the visibility which we got, uh, so that helped us a lot in our business process. Great, great insights, Mr. Sandeep. Again, uh, the kind of flexibility and uh, complete visibility uh, gives you more in terms of uh, end user services, especially when it comes to. Uh, consumer goods when you're trying to uh, connect with them and uh, it, it, it's all future that's what the digital transformation great great insights coming back to madam where uh, you uh, uh, stated saying like no the cloud compute and the kind of uh, other features are trying to enable us to take it out any any a process or thought process of your organization on cloud computing or specific to your future like you no know, post covid what type of uh, uh, solutions you are planning part of the great data center Sure. So, uh, as I mentioned, like from, you know, we, we also have transformed from trying to build our own data centers to actually now we have moved almost 90% of our data to cloud and uh, we are OK to have the sensitive data on, sh on shared infrastructure as well. Uh, I think post COVID, the, the major transformation we are moving towards is uh, really trying to see how much of uh, data management we can do do we really need you know all this data uh, that we are we have been storing historically and how do we aggregate and filter out the absolutely required data it's, it's you know the data leak that we are building you just can't keep dumping the bad data in it again and again how do you make sure that the processing that you are doing it is filtering and cleansing the data before you dump everything in the leak so uh, I think that's one of the initiatives, the kind of data processing and uh, management that our, our, you know, our com company is also focusing on. There's a lot of aspects of data engineering and the way we parse the data, the way we cleanse it, and the kind of quality checks we do so that only the quality and you know accurate data, curated data sets are sort of stored in, in our data centers. And you're really uh, saving the space by not storing everything, like like all the raw data. because I think when you compare between the amount of raw data that you uh, store and the, the actual data that you usually use, uh, it, it really amounts to about 40 to 50 percent out, out of the entire data set that you have stored. 40 to 50 percent is actually when what you generally use for, for all of your use cases. 
so the data curation the processing that is one of the uh, initiatives we've been heavily focusing on the other initiative as i spoke before was the edge computing so there is a uh, uh, a suite of the agents and devices that G is also investing in. Uh, the, these are basically edge compute devices which would sit next to our machines and uh, gather the sensor IoT data. And while it's gathering, it's also cleansing and filtering. The same concept that I said, it is applying right at the machine, right at that endpoint, and only sending the relevant data back to the cloud. So that way, it, you know, it, it also enables uh, our uh, customers, uh, our technicians to perform a lot of real time decision making at that device. And as well as, you know, you're, you're making sure that you're not sending every data element back to the cloud and you're, you're saving on a lot of sensor IoT data elements being dumped into the into the storage. The third thing I would call out is uh, we are also looking at options of uh, using a distributed kind of architecture where uh, we are not just you know having our uh, data hopping between different data nodes, but having uh, different hierarchies of uh, data clusters. So what happens is by architecting your data uh, processing in that way, you are actually having uh, different sensor nodes and different cluster nodes. So the cluster nodes are responsible for sending or communicating data from one node to another while sensor nodes keep sensing or listening to the data. So having layered and hierarchies in those clusters has helped us in reducing the number of data nodes that we generally use. And that again has also helped us in reducing the amount of compute that's generally needed for us for, for processing all of this you know, IoT data. So I think these are really the, the top three initiatives we've been more focusing on. And I think if you look at it, these are more in-house practices that we are trying to implement so that we are able to really save on the, the, the energy and the compute that we are requiring. There are, of course, more initiatives that we can focus on, like uh, you know, using probably data centers virtually in a more cooling or in a more cool uh, location so that you, you're really not spending a lot of energy in cooling the servers down. But that is more dependent on the, the cloud servers or the cloud service providers that we utilize. And we can always have that discussion later. But in-house within G, we are really focusing on making sure that the data is processed at the equipment at the endpoint. And then our architecture on how we you know, move the data between different clusters. Great, great insights, uh, Madam. Again, uh, you started saying like uh, more than 90% of the uh, things got moved to cloud and uh, uh, you are having the data management, especially uh, handling uh, multiple volumes of data and creating the data lake cleansing and processing and storing everywhere. Actually, it, it, it's not so easy task, which again, the in-house has taken it. And you are trying to use as much as on the edge computing again, uh, devices trying to use as much of the sensors, which try to give right and relevant to storage. Again, it's a backend process, which try to reduce the load, which, which tries to compute as much as on that. Again, the distribution of data, which generally, uh, especially medical industry, people try to uh, find it very difficult to do it, which already people have initiated distribution of data capture by cluster sensors. Again, nodes are reducing unwanted computing, which was uh, one of the things and which enables again, in the end of the day, uh, save energy and put less load on their servers and the uh, expectation set part of it. And again, uh, keeping that much information, how secure, how uh, the security is used part of your system to keep still uh, green data centers and uh, the kind of, uh, when you try to uh, save energy, put less of load, uh, any security concerns uh, which uh, you try to uh, use it part of in-house or you try to uh, expect or expect from green data centers from outside. No, the, it's a combination again. The the green data centers, the service providers also provide. Uh, you know, I'm I'm aware of a few uh, you know kind of services that Amazon, AWS, Azure have have also provided. So to give an example, we are all into this trans generation of doing a lot of data and analytics, right? Developing a lot of analytic solutions, and while you're developing this analytics on very sensitive data, you need a very secured uh, enclave. And uh, uh, you know, AWS offers these nitro enclaves, which sort of can provide a very demilitarized zone where the data 
uh, can be trained and modeled within a very secured environment and insights that get generated can then be sent you know to customers or to any external uh, vendors who sort of utilize or or uh, do any kind of services on our machines so that way you are actually securing the the ip aspect the intellectual property aspect of the data within that environment you're doing every kind of processing and model creation data analysis in that secured enclave and only the insights are sent outside of it so that is one of the very good uh, you know uh, solutions we got from from amazon as well and uh, in house uh, what we do is we make sure that when the data is coming out of our sensors or our machines to the edge as well as to the cloud, the data while in transit and while being stored in the cloud as well as in the edge, it's always encrypted. So there are different kind of encryption algorithms that have been implemented, different kind of encryption techniques which uses uh, you know keys, uh, pair, paired keys concept between client and server. Uh, those are the kind of encryptions we have utilized so that the data is always encrypted while store, storing it and while in transit as well. Great, great insights. As uh, you said, uh, like, no, you are trying even when it is more to do with cloud, it's an inbuilt uh, secure services, especially secure conclave uh, no, from AWS and in house also does more in terms of it. So it's great insights and uh, thanks, thanks for that information. And uh, getting getting back to Mr. Rajiv, I, I have something to put from uh, our prospect where uh, we do have a lot more in terms of uh, a data center model where when we had enough from the financial services and keeping the background in terms of uh, the regulators and other things, we do have three set of uh, uh, data center models within the uh, company where we have something called on-premise data center where we have enough to do with internal collaboration, especially uh, the kind of uh, data which we want to use for intranet and the kind of uh, data which is used for the workflow defined processes is set part of the OPDC where we say on-premise and data center, which is fully integrated with all our uh, managed data center solutions on online, offline, and trying to use part of the uh, location, 1,600 locations across the country. And it is used to use as much as on the self-contained uh, plug and play model. Like, no, people can try to use the uh, reports or the solutions or capturing the interface, which is deployed within the uh, intranet solutions where they can have even a drag and drop scheme defined at the branch level, which will allow the people to capture. And we do have almost 40% uh, of our OPEX savings by this model trying to use as much as on the on-premise data center which is available part of our uh, locations especially intranet or locations where dealer broker agents and the mediator level people can use it part of it where they have less of uh, 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 the information which they try to expedite the process where it's more to do with commercial and the financial impact which comes part of the on-premise data center and we do have something of an enterprise cloud services ECS where we try to use as much as on the collaboration whichever it's on the OEMs especially the manufacturing units like uh, uh, Mahindra's, Maruti, Tata and other uh, big OEMs which they are trying to use part of the cloud enabled system which, which try to use as much as on the information which is trying to use even from VPN connections they can have a, a, a large model during month ends we can have something called elastic computing, computing which is like uh, we have generally 35,000 users where during month ends we will have minimum 60 to 70,000 and during festival we might have even one like end users they are coming back and trying to use the elastic computing on demand and trying to use as much as on our server option which enhance them to use the uh, cloud model which is secured and it is on a high availability model also the third one is what more uh, we try to use uh, which is specific to high density data center where which gives more of their latest technologies you call it artificial intelligence or whichever the data which is used for especially MIS reports which is available at the bandwidth of a location for example you should have minimum two mbps line then those locations like head office uh, zonal office regional office area office can connect and try to use it we have something to do with a high density data center which try to capitalize on that the uh, post covid the expectation set currently is what we had something called 
for the da data which is online which is kept everywhere for the public cloud that means i can enter the data for the day in the cloud which will be available for all of them till the end of the day once i do the end of the day process the data will go back to the private cloud and post the data and I remove the data from the public cloud which is for the day so today any point of time for the full day data starts from 10 o'clock till 5 o'clock which is available for all the locations they have to use it a public cloud which is used more to do an infinite data center where the full uh, world can see the per day transaction which is available the benefit is what we don't have the full transactions part of the system made available public so public today uh, during covid and post covid the architecture will support to use only the data which is available for the day so that you can capture any information could be a receipt or could be disbursement could be a payment or a collection which is uh, for the entities could be dealer broker agent they will try to utilize and uh, do that so currently we have this four different models and it will have less pressure on the backend machines and trying to optimize as much as on on premise and the cloud enterprise enabled system which again have an architect of uh, migrated applications which is managed privately and publicly and trying to use a mix of on premise data center enterprise and the day one day data center which try to create a leverage resource which is hosted part of the system so similar types now it's coming very highly especially from the financial services which will enable us to go closer to the end users especially the shared model of uh, people trying to get as much as part of the security system and we can even leverage the data center which gives us more green in terms of high effective and keeping it high efficiency which enables us to create current and the future plans which is part of the data center so uh, uh, similar questions like uh, i would want to uh, check with mr rajiv to find out how uh, especially when it comes to uh, reduction in power or in cooling it is the increase of server storage like you said you are trying to get as much as on the cloud how the improvement of data center especially comes to space data or uh, efficiency in terms of energy how you see and how your people plan for current and post Covid. Mr. Rajiv, for you this. A uh, very good question, Dr. Uh, Suresh. And uh, uh, what you cited the example, it was about the financial sector. But in case of our manufacturing set, uh, sector, the situation is slightly different. And uh, the situation is like, uh, uh, although the uh, number of applications have increased over the years. But at the same time, the uh, amount of uh, compute power, the amount of uh, uh, data center space, the amount of cooling and air conditioning, uh, sorry, and the electric power. So that also needs to grow in the same manner as per the requirement of the uh, applications. But in a manufacturing sector, uh, there are always challenges to get this kind of um, uh, facilities to increase the data center space and uh, related things. It's a quite challenge for us here to uh, get all these things in a manufacturing sector, because uh, as you know, uh, in a manufacturing sector, the uh, uh, importance is given always to the uh, manufacturing, the core business, and rest of the things are kind of a service uh, or the support activities. So uh, while uh, adding more and more applications, we need to think in a very um, uh, detailed manner as to uh, what kind of computer will be required, what is the additional rack space and all this. So we at IT, whenever have to add uh, certain applications, we have to do a lot of amount of homework as to uh, what all these things will be required. Uh, taking into consideration the current situation, the amount of growth of data size, and we have to plan for next at least three years or four years. Because in an ideal situation, three years, I can say that is the... Uh, sufficient amount of time for which you have to plan your resources I you ask for additional this space additional uh, uh, rack space or whatever it is so we do the planning for at least three years and based on that we calculate so earlier it was easier uh, for us to do the calculation but now since the number of users and the amount of data that is increasing so that puts additional load on the um, backend uh, compute power and uh, related support activities. So whatever calculation you do for three years here itself, and then you have to go back to management saying that no, this is not 
the mission we need addition so the point i'm trying to say is that in this uh, growing situation uh, we have to do a detailed calculation and when we do a detailed calculation we came to know that it is adding to the backend resources so uh, it is always beneficial for um, to go in and think of a kind of green data center wherein all these facilities will be available and made available to you at your request and the increased workload in the service providers we don't have to worry on those fronts and that is where the catch is so what we did was um, while uh, transferring the workload cloud we did a detailed calculation as to how much amount of all these things will be required for next at least 4 years and if according to me if you do this calculations only for a year or so you will not get the benefits you will not be able to show the return on investment on paper uh, to the management you will not be able to justify the roi you will not be able to justify the total cost of ownership so taking this into consideration we did the calculation for uh, at least 4 years and we had an understanding with the service provider that uh this prices will remain the same for 4 years uh in the process the if any additional uh, <coughs> compute power is required that will be added and it will not be charged extra and we all know in the it industry that <coughs> uh any particular steps small steps in the cloud are going to be charged to us so it goes on adding um, amount of rupees uh, to our so much amount of day we should push to the cloud as uh, my colleague and very uh, restricted or filtered data can go to the cloud so that kind of analysis and uh, sizing and it's also to be taken into consideration while you are transferring the data to the cloud so after doing all this exercise it has opened new avenues for us that uh, the benefit of green cloud is enormous according to me and uh, we get a real kind of peace of mind after transferring to uh, the cloud uh, all the applications and recently we have moved three applications to the cloud and very soon we will be moving more applications to the cloud because we are uh, uh, getting the benefits of the cloud we are reaping the benefits of the cloud and that to especially the uh, green cloud according to me so that has opened uh, new avenues new opportunities and also our in house it team has yes hello somebody speaking hello you can continue you can continue sir yeah uh, there was some disturbance so that has opened a uh, various opportunities benefits for, for us to move various applications and uh, we are seeing the benefits of the cloud and the most important factor according to me is earlier the in house it resources were busy in maintaining this uh, uh, data centers forget about the green data center or hi fi fancy things but maintaining a server keeping it up and running keeping the lights on that was a big headache and big task for in house it department now that everything has gone and now i can ask the in house it team to focus on new avenues kind sort of uh, like say digitalization projects and all those things so we are all focused on uh, this opportunity so we don't have to worry bother about uh, may how to i uh, maintain the uh, uh, data center so that is the biggest benefit that we are seeing uh, in this uh, moment to the cloud great great insights and uh, again uh, you pointed out very clearly uh, stating it out like uh, you know uh, it, it's, it's it's more to do with uh, like what our information which we are trying to extract and uh, trying to bring it out it's not just a, a technology or it's not going to uh, give you the uh, kind of uh, uh, information it's going to create as much as uh, specifically when you try to uh, do more business and concentrate more on keeping live more business on that rather than keeping Uh, the uh, inhouse working on data center related inhouse will be free to work on some other areas which they are trying to get as much as a part of it and uh, they are trying to get leveraged also into uh, uh, much more activities so here uh, one more question to mr rajiv kier where uh, good old days you know uh, manufacturing will be more focusing about 
24 by 7 or a, a more of a, you call 99.9 .9 uptime. Uh, now the manufacturing has moved to get into a 10x kind of performance or uh, we have some uh, ERPs getting in part of uh, suppose if you see in uh, Mahindra and Mahindra they have something called research which they try to do as much using data center where they are using some free trial space. So uh, uh, how you feel manufacturing can still try to use as opportunity where uh, since now you said in-house is freed for so many things. So uh, still traditionally we'll tune for a 24 by 7 or we will uh, focus more on uh, 10x performance or getting into multiple applications the way you said. You are on mute. Yeah. So uh, that was uh, really the thought that I had in mind. So after uh, freeing up the IT uh, staff, uh, what we are doing is we are taking this as an opportunity uh, for uh, working more with less. Because earlier it was at a kind of 24 by 7 um, environment. But now since everything has been transferred to cloud, we have sufficient time and we are focusing on various digitalization activities. We are taking that as a opportunity for multiplying the digital opportunities that we are started and let me tell you a fact that um, we transferred our critical workload to cloud during the pandemic the project had started earlier in january or so and because of the lockdown and all the situation our staff could not go to shop floor to test certain applications but still after certain relaxations we managed to send our staff to the uh, shop floor and tested it and just when the lockdown was in process, uh, after the, some relaxation, we managed to transfer everything to uh, cloud. So that was the greatest achievement for us. And now since everything is in cloud, we have got the sufficient time and we are able to focus on uh, various initiatives. Earlier, we thought of taking, uh, say, uh, having at least uh, maximum 50 uh, kind of uh, digitalization projects. So that will be more than sufficient that we thought. But later on, when we uh, started working on this and having uh, convinced our business uh, owners the uh, benefits of the cloud and about the digitalization activities, suggesting them various digitalization initiatives, was what process can be uh, fine-tuned and what benefits we can achieve with respect to time, with respect to dollars, everything. The number of these digitalization initiatives which we thought earlier was just 50 to the maximum but let me tell you currently as on today just today i had the, uh, the monthly review the number of digitalization projects that we are working is around 272 so that is the biggest opportunity that we have got and the point that i'm trying to drive uh, is to answer your question is that uh, we are seeing this as an opportunity to focus the it staff and uh, work them um, on a more detailed and a focused approach of digitalization, automation, and other projects also. So that is the greatest benefit for us in the manufacturing sector. Great, great, great insights. Um, so as, uh, as you mentioned very clearly to bring it out as much as uh, during COVID, you are even able to address something around 272 numbers of process and uh, projects which you are trying to enable it. It's, it's a great number and uh, how uh, manufacturing is very much open and trying to use as much as on the data center. Uh, uh, thank, thanks for the insight. And uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sandeep, now uh, you, uh, you know the kind of transformation retail is going through, especially the retail with the e-business uh, trying to get enabled and the kind of volumes now e-business in especially retail is challenging. How do you see current and uh, what, what what is the strategy for us when you try to bring it out as much as uh, when you try to create uh, the green data center networks one side and uh, the opportunities are available, but how we can build from current and taking it to the future? So see, currently in our no, current scenario, we are fortunate that we have this uh, green data center and grid data center which are available for the technology transformations. So that is where we already have started looking at it and we have started working on the pilot projects for our artificial intelligence and deep learning. So because now we are trying to learn the sentiments of customers very closely. Previously we were doing it, but it was more towards a reactive mode. Now based on this current technologies and due to this data center flexibility, we are planning to get into this more micro level of the sentiments of the customers 
that is where this covid helped us a lot because a lot of guys went and mostly all of them were doing e-commerce all were purchasing from uh, e-commerce websites only so that gave us the opportunity to generate more data because else it was taking time for us to get those data now this covid this six for four to five months data it gave us more or less visibility of three years of data else it will have taken if i take it as a future it will have taken another one and a half year to generate that data so now based on that data we are building up the entire predictive analysis of that what our customer sentiments will be there and we are from the business perspective it is helping them for cross promotional activities also so whatever it is not like if they are going to buy our our products only we will give them the options of sitting at on one website doing that cross promotional activities with our other partners and then how we can give that benefit to the customers of course that will give us generate revenues for our organization as well so here cloud has played a major role and you know somewhere for our retail we were fortunate enough that uh, for uh, some of the other reasons we moved our core applications from on premises to cloud which helped us to survive during our covid in fact our, i will not say survive in the understatement survive and scale up in our business learn a lot of things and get it to the next level which we are looking at the artificial intelligence and do the predictive analysis for our customers so that accordingly our entire inventory management can be done supply chain can be done our warehouse management can be planned accordingly before customer wants anything you know? so that is what we are currently looking at so it is given as a huge opportunity so for this uh, data centers has given us and, and the platforms which have come up now those are very humongous great great insights again uh, you are trying to bring it out more on the green data center which uh, uh, people think for uh, more than 3 years now that has shrunk in uh, this 4 to 5 months and you are able to get as much as more information and the volume also got uh, increased uh, the big data definition got a different uh, digital transformation and trying to use it and again you pointed out nothing just called survive it's more to survive and scale up no uh, that's where the retail and manufacturing trying to bring out and again the customer service and trying to create as much as on the inventory supply chain this all uh, looks very small but again it, it, it is having its own impact when it comes to especially data and other things on that great insights uh, coming back to you on one question to find out to say Uh, what type of innovative measures which enables you uh, as from the uh, in house model or uh, from your business model which still you can enable or which you would want to tell the audience to say these are the areas which give you some uh, green side to proceed anything on the data center or the technologies during this covid for especially retail and manufacturing so for uh, retail yes we as we said that uh, we gave us the huge leverage uh, for generating data and building up the technology over this uh, those data that was the huge uh, our you know, learnings from this uh, covid and in manufacturing what uh, we were we are into 24 by 7 manufacturing is going on so we never get any time to do any maintenance part or hygiene factor that helped us a lot about the uh, during this covid and it helped more because we were on cloud so these are the two takeaways for retail and for manufacturing from our experience please yeah it's it again a great insights and uh, trying to build uh, like how retail is capturing or capitalizing on the current movement and trying to get more e business where you know trying to create as much as uh, less of electronics and go getting more of emotions so again uh, putting part of uh, uh, our sector our uh, financial services now the kind of demand and the kind of volumes we have got increased part of vpn especially uh, that has gone 100% and we are trying to use even the dealers brokers agents and other people also trying to use as much as technology part of the uh, uh, information available and uh, for us it's more than 500 600% of data got added and uh, currently we are trying to uh, even leverage it and trying to extract and putting it in the back end data systems to again get into the different parts of our storage earlier we thought of just putting in some simple uh, enterprise architect and trying to put it but the kind of data which has come now the technology expert suggests to bring out as much as on the containers and trying to do it out so the future is going to be more in terms of risking and trying to uh, create as much as part of the data center and again we have to have more of a green data center with the networks and trying to create as much as opportunities which try to build the environment into the next level 
now uh, coming back to madam where uh, how do you feel uh, this uh, especially green data center and networks play a role in enabling the smart enterprise for your industry i think the the biggest uh, benefit that uh, you know the cios will care about for any industry not only healthcare is the cost right the the savings that you can bring back to the company and uh, as all of us mentioned in the panel the the data volume is you know uh, increasing uh, tremendously and uh, for us to be able to you know you know be, be efficiently processing the data and uh, have the data stored in a reliable center and have a very good performance like the the 10 9s performance that you also spoke of uh, to have all of that i think energy efficiency is not just a contributor to the overall green environment but is also a very very big benefit for us in terms of the the savings that we can actually drive you know in the cost so um, all all of the cios the way we generally plan our infrastructure uh, we, we are always you know uh, uh, sort of there's a threshold of the budget with which we can plan how how to store this where to store the data i think uh, the the biggest change that uh, i can see for us is since we will also be mandated to see how we can be more cost effective and and thankfully and fortunately the way the path to cost effectiveness is by by uh, you know adopting to these green uh, practices uh, i think the way we will now uh, road map Uh, our our infrastructure the way we store our data for for come three to five years uh, it's critical how we do that within the budget that's you know allocated to us and with the kind of green solutions that we can pick and we can prescribe uh, with you know the kind of service providers we also pick so it's really a choice uh, that will not only help you know the environment but also uh, gives you a lot of cost savings and makes you be more Uh, efficient cio managing this for your own organization so that's less where you know, i see this uh, becoming a really big benefit uh, for us great great again uh, you pointed out uh, stating like it's a uh, uh, more to do with cost again everyone uh, every company is trying to fix it out and trying to use data volume you uh, know the kind of uh, increase coming part of the data irrespective of the uh, uh, sector and trying to create energy efficiency again savings in that uh, especially cost and all the uh, uh, cios will focus more not just green solutions it's more to do with effective ways of means and doing it out so that the uh, ROIs a built part of the sector will enable you to do multiple things thank thanks for the insights where uh, uh, if you want to point out uh, any one of the uh, uh, major uh, current uh, which requires a technology in terms of uh, a smart enterprise any one technology which you feel especially you started telling on sensors and uh, more of uh, the uh, outsource uh, trying to bring out cloud everything any one which you have planned now for this uh, uh, post covid which will uh, have some good impact on your organization especially uh, the kind of uh, in house to outsource so uh, you know the 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 way we have been always uh, uh, processing the the data for all kind of solutions that we are building so the kind of analytic solutions we build is mainly for our uh, customers for our in house customers and for our machines like the preventive maintenance that we do for the machines so uh, i think uh, the the biggest solution that we will be adopting is how we can do that preventive maintenance at the machine itself so without getting the data back to the cloud and uh, churning the data from across in uh, thousands of machines together and then building an algorithm how can you probably have ready insights and uh, ready uh, you know uh, algorithms that can be just uh, run at the equipment at the edge as i said that is one of the biggest in- initiatives for us so instead of us using a lot of processing back to the cloud back and forth from cloud to the machine uh, we will rather do that just at that machine at that edge device so basically there, there are a lot of uh, platforms that we are also developing a mini edge versions of the cloud platforms which can be deployed at the machine itself and uh, since most of our devices are legacy 
so there's a lot of firmware updates that we also have to do in the machine so that we can process this data at the machine itself. So uh, that's been one, one major transformation. That's uh, So basically converting your compute into edge and fog. So what, uh, what kind of compute of that data uh, that, that you want to run at the edge at the machine and what kind of compute you want to run at the cloud. That differentiation is what you know the company is working on. And I think most likely uh, about uh, there will be easily a reduction of 40 to 50 percent of the data and the compute that was needed back in the cloud, which we will be pushing back to just the machine to the edge. So that's uh, really one of the one of the smartest things. I think a lot of industries yeah. are moving. Uh, great, great insights, madam. Again, uh, the kind of preventive maintenance and especially trying to use the uh, uh, simplifying the algorithms and trying to use into money and uh, many uh, 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 no, platforms which will have more from the uh, legacy and trying to try compute and uh, uh, put a right word into edge and fog. It's all. Uh, it's it's more to do with uh, like know how an uh, enabling smart enterprise can build it out. Thank thanks for the insights. And uh, sir, coming to uh, Mr. Rajiv, uh, since you mentioned more on ROI and uh, uh, trying to uh, get uh, more closer to that, like how the current uh, enabling the smart enterprise, you feel uh, such green efficiencies will give us uh, the kind of ROI what we expect and any specific te uh, technology which you feel like you know, which will be your priority so that you no, know, it takes you you have said even more than more applications helping you to do that but any particular which uh, part of the manufacturing will be the focus so that you no know, we will move towards the smart enterprise uh, yes um, in our uh, uh, organization, we have taken an initiative of uh, digitalizing every possible process by which we can add value to the uh, internal customer's business. Suppose a uh, particular process was staying uh, was taking uh, 10 minutes. So we took an initiative as to how we can reduce that particular time to five minutes. If the process was taking 10 um, steps, how we can reduce it to three or four. So by that, we can achieve <coughs> Uh, the uh, process excellence and add value to the uh, business. So that was our target and uh, that is what we are trying to focus on. So after moving to the cloud, we have taken all these initiatives by which we can uh, step by step or in small ways we can add value to the business. Taking example of our manufacturing shop floor environment, in our various factories uh, uh, which are more than 15 plus, we have several machines which need to be monitored on a day-to-day -day basis uh, on various parameters uh, like what we call it uh, OE of the machine and uh, for uh, parameters for uh, predictive analysis and to capture. We are able to capture all this data uh, after going uh, <coughs> doing this initiative, and this is helping us a lot for uh, the. Predictive analysis, the, uh, the manufacturing, the, the operations people benefit that we see, and that is really helping us to uh, excel on the ROI front. So, uh, whenever we are doing the, any these kind of seasons, we are gathering and we for digitalization of that particular process, what was the scenario with respect to number of hours spent and what was the, uh, in short, the total cost for doing that particular uh, activity. And after digitalization of that particular process, then how the situation has improved. Earlier it was taking as X amount of time, whether it is uh, taking X minus five or it is taking the same time. That kind of we are doing and also analysis with respect to the amount of uh, uh, savings earlier it was costing say for example hundred dollars now it is costing say around 70 or 80 dollars so that analysis for each and every uh, digitalization initiatives or the automation initiatives uh, we are calculating it and on a weekly basis we are monitoring that and that we are connecting with the um, what we had planned for the return on investment so that is where we are able to justify as to what was the cost uh, that we had to incur for moving to the cloud. And after moving to the cloud in a period of saving in terms of, as I said, in terms of time and 
money that we are achieving. So we have calculated that and we foresee that uh, we should be able to achieve at least 30% of the savings as come to earlier what we were doing in a period of maximum one to uh, one and a half years, maximum two years. So that is the kind of calculation that has gone into the homework uh, before taking the approvals and before moving to the cloud. Okay, great, great, great insights. Again, uh, you said uh, like you are trying to monitor as much as on the day-to-day uh, -day basis and trying to uh, uh, get that $100 to $70 weekly basis and trying to use as much as in terms of uh, trying to uh, see the kind of benefits and uh, trying to focus more on the future business. Thanks, thanks for Mr. Rajiv on the insights. Uh, uh, coming back to Mr. Uh, Sandeep, uh, anything you want to uh, feel and say or conclude by saying like uh, a smart enterprise retail manufacturing smart enterprise uh, how e-business or how uh, you the way you claim today the kind of uh, uh, green data center networks gives you the beneficiary any one technology which you feel you are comfortable and it is given success now and future how we are going to position it so in my opinion and uh, with what our learnings and understanding is there we should take advantage of the platform as a service wherein we have given the scalability options available. And what I have learned and understood from my fellow panelists is that whatever you want to reduce in the performance, you want to increase the performance and reduce the cost, this is the best way we can do it. So I would uh, urge that we should use that platform as a service and take care of, take advantage of the emerging platform which are currently available. Great, great insights. And again, uh, uh, you put nicely saying like try to uh, increase the performance and try to reduce the uh, overall operating cost, which try to put it out. Anyway, to uh, conclude the kind of information we collected from you all to create an enabling smart enterprise, it starts with the kind of essential infrastructure and the kind of infrastructure which could be more into virtualization or getting into operating systems and application migration, trying to bring it, put it part of it trying to deploy as much as on the mobility and trying to use as much security, which is part of IoT, use as much as on the cloud integration and trying to set the uh, high interface or high availability, which is getting connected with the people using social media, using your web interface and trying to create as much as monetary tools as madam has pointed out how they have the management tools trying to bring out in-house to create the green IT efficiency which is part of a smart uh, enterprise, which we are trying to use access and plan and trying to uh, design and test and uh, deploy, trying to manage as much as part of the uh, retire and disposal assets, which keeps more of a, a smart enterprise, which comes part of the uh, green, especially data center and networks. Surely it is an opportunity, even though challenges are there, every industry and every sector seems to it as a more into a positive note and trying to get engaged. It's, it's a great opportunity for us and surely uh, post COVID, as the kind of uh, digital transformation which has created the uh, corporate digital towards the customer digital where every customer is going to be as corporate and we are going to treat as much a digital transformation using the big data which is part of the high data centers and the kind of new technology with the latest all jargons trying to put to create a community cloud and empower the customers trying to get as much as on the uh, technology usage platform availability to get connected with all the sectors and trying to have a, a transformed environment and trying to get engaged for the a kind of business what we are looking for and the kind of volumes which is going to add all of us are at least prepared and trying to add by doing uh, slight changes in the information or architect we will focus more towards the kind of expectation set current and for the future thanks thanks for your all valuable time and great insights i have learned a lot i've got enough information and uh, at least uh, the panelists also would have seen the different uh, information happening part of the retail manufacturing manufacture and the kind of uh, healthcare trying to do it from the finance also like this is a diversified panel which we have enough information on the other side good to know and uh, we have uh, enough to do on the other side surely uh, the verticals are focusing on the future all the best and thanks for your valuable time it's it's great uh, learning and uh, uh, it's appreciated uh, listening to all you people with your great experience thanks thanks for all valuable time thank you so much thank you everyone thanks. thank you thank you
Thank you, Mr. Suresh Shah. As usual, you have once again, uh, uh, you know, navigated this panel discussion very well. I thank you so much for once again participating at uh, in in this conference and moderate this session. Thank you so much, Mr. Suresh Shah. Uh, is a head innovation and future technologies at Mahindra and Mahindra Financial Services Limited. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Khada, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Khada is Vice President Global, Global Information Technology at Sigma Electric Manufacturing Limited. I thank Minakshi Kuntia and Sandeep Kothari also. Minakshi ji uh, is Director of Data and Analytics at G Healthcare and Mr. Kothari is ex-head IT, Prince Pipe and Fittings Limited. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, everyone for participating in this panel discussion. Uh, we will again break here for a, a small networking break. Once again, I'll request everyone to please visit the exhibition area. I'm sure you are going to like the products and solutions and technologies which are there in our exhibition area. I request everyone, please visit the expo. If you have got any query, please get in touch with the respective person. And after the break, we will again assemble in this virtual hall for our next panel discussion, which is on security challenges in current wave of digital transformation. Uh, again, a very significant subject that we all must understand to a T. Thank you so much, everyone. We, bre we break here for a small break and we will again assemble in this virtual hall after some time. Thank you. <laughs>